Okay, today's rehab session is on high hamstring tendinopathy. So, origin hamstring tendinopathy. This is a follow-on from the previous video I did on the early stage tendinopathy, when you're sort of acute or it's quite weak. This is the advanced stage, so we're moving on from the easy exercises. What we're going to try and do is advance a few and give you some new stuff to do as well. So, the advancement is going to be on a elevated bridge. So we're going to go from a two-legged elevated bridge to a single-leg elevated bridge, okay, which is really important for those hamstrings. Then we'll move on to a single-leg deadlift, and we're trying to work on closed chain work before our open chain. So we're warming it up in the closed chain environment, which is essential work. Doing a single-leg deadlift is very functional, so we like doing that. And then we move on to two new ones, and the two new ones are going to use bands to try and work on almost replicating a running movement, okay, with load and trying to isolate that hamstring right up the top there. And then the second one is trying to work on some real sort of inner range hamstring work and trying to get load onto hip extension and prone. It's quite difficult. It's pretty high load. So these ones are definitely for people who have done the early stage stuff and then move on to the advanced stage to try and bridge that gap and into return to sport. So let's start with the first one. First one we're going to work on is elevated bridge. Now, all you need is a bench height like this. If you're at home, you can use a sofa. That's probably the right about height. The trick with this one, like I did with your initial stage, is you don't want to be, you don't want to be in that position, okay, where you're 90 degrees, because when you lift up, it's going to be more glutes. You want, you're trying to target the hamstring at the top. You will get belly with this, but you're going to, of course, but you're going to try and target up here rather than targeting down there. So edge it back a bit, get your angle of your knee increased, okay, and then what you're going to try and do is raise one leg first, all right, and when you push up, all right, you're going to glide like that. You go and try and get as high as you can with the hips, okay? Try not to sort of get to here and then that's not enough. You really need full extension with this. So making sure you've got enough strength to drive through the heel, push up, and then slow on the way down, all right? So there's no real eccentric work with this because you're past that. You're just doing concentric work, single leg, trying to really isolate in this part here to get that stronger. And replicating the movement that that hamstring does. Hip extension, all right, and we're trying to do it with a bent knee, and that will just load you straight in from mid to upper. It's an awesome exercise, okay? So you don't need any sort of load with that. Your body weight load is enough for that exercise. You don't need any bars or anything like that for this sort of thing because it's single leg, all right? It's not like a hip thrust where you're putting load on. It's a single leg, keep the load off. That's your first one. Second thing I want you to work on is a single leg deadlift. Now, if you notice, that's a closed chain, meaning your foot is fixed and your body moves. Same with a single leg deadlift. That is closed chain as well. So when I do that, I want a weight that's decent enough. I should be able to do roughly 10% of my body weight. So I should be able to start with that. So 80 kilos, that's eight kilos, 10% of my body weight. With this one, what I want you to make sure of is you're doing exactly the same movement as a two-legged deadlift, okay? So if you imagine, and we're talking Romanian deadlift here, imagine a two-legged deadlift is like that, okay? Where your knee doesn't really travel forward. Remember, it's extended to start with, right? But when you initiate the movement, the bells, I need to get my shoulders forward. So when I initiate the movement, I bend my knees a little bit, but then they stay there. Okay, and then I hinge backwards. I also want my knees out of my feet. But when you're doing a single leg, okay, the same rules apply. It's just the weight is sort of situated over, not over my foot, it's over to the left. All right. Therefore, I'll need this hand out here for a bit of counterweight. All right. So if you always think, some people get this wrong, but opposite hand, opposite leg. Okay, so my hand that's out here, this leg needs to be moving. Or if I think I'm weight bearing, Therefore, I've got the weight in the opposite hand. Weight bearing leg, weight in the opposite hand. That's the way you think about it. So when I do this, our leg is straight. When I drop down, I do a little tilt forward and bend my knee. So the whole thing moves forward. So I go from bend knee, shoulders forward, other leg backwards. And then I've got my shoulder directly over my hand. You can see that's vertical now. All right. So from there, then I want to sit my hips back just like a Romanian deadlift till I get that bow or hand about half shin and then come up again. Now the trick is, 
trying to control your knee. Okay, some people with bad knee stability or maybe their hip control is not very good, that their knees might wobble in a little bit. You might need to work on hip stability. But if that's good, this is a great exercise to target directly hip extension in a standing position, closed chain. Okay, so not open chain, we're doing the closed chain version. You're going to nail that mid to upper hamstring. If you do that movement correctly, make sure that back leg is reasonably straight. It's not bent like this, it's reasonably straight. And that's your hinge back, and you should start really feeling it through here. You'll also feel your glute work because you're doing hip extension. So don't worry that you feel like, oh, my glute's working. You can't get away with that. You're doing hip extension, the buttock's going to work, okay? But as long as you are making sure you're doing the right things at the knee and sitting backwards to get that part working, okay, then you'll do a good job with that. Just be careful with load. These are the sort of exercises that you feel okay with, and then the next day you feel like you've overloaded. And especially someone who is not 100%, that's why you're doing rehab, you're not 100%, um, you may find there's still a bit of a DOMS effect. That's too much. So just be careful. Start off light, as in 10%. See how you go the next few days, then move it up. Okay, be very careful with that. So that's your two closed chains one. Then we want to work the open chain. Now this gets a little bit tricky. What I want you to do first, which is probably the easier of the two, I find um, this one is certainly easy on me. Put a band around something. Now this in the gym can be a pole, of course, table leg, something that's not going to move, right? I would use, this is a TheraBand, right? And this is quite a good one to use, a flat TheraBand. Don't underestimate how hard it is. So this is a yellow, the lightest, right? I would start with the lightest, to be honest, till you get the hang of it and then progress up to a harder one. Um, use this as your resistance, okay? What I'd do, make one loop with that, tied around something, put it around the back of your heel and just twist it like that and then it's not gonna move, right? Then you're good. Now, what you're not gonna do, I might have to put a bit of bounce here, is do this. Okay, we're not doing hamstring curls for this high hamstring tendinopathy, okay? What we want to work on is movement of hip extension with that, but I want to try and get you into the point where it's like a running type movement, so it's very functional for relating or getting it closer to doing what you're doing, like running and sport. So, you go from a knee flexion position. You think of like when you're sprinting, you're going to go from this position, and then you're going to end up in that position. Because when you're running, that's the position you're going to be in, and then forward again. So the good thing about when it's tied around your heel, it's not going to, it's not going to flip off, okay? So I would go from here. Now you've got to think, I need a bit of tension there. So maybe step back a little bit and just get the point where you can start there with some tension. You're not going to, this is what you're not going to do. You're not going to go and just push that down and straighten your leg. Because what I'm doing there is using my quads now to push it backwards. I want this to be used, all right, more than my quads. So what you do is keep your knee bent the whole way through to there, all right? It's quite hard to do. So imagine I'm hinging here. I'm trying not to bend or straighten the knee anymore, all right? So I'm doing hip extension in standing like I do when I run. Okay, from there into that position. Now, it's not exactly the running movement, okay? But what I'm trying to do is give you that isolation, which is give you that strength. If you just do the running motion, you start losing some of that isolation. This is gonna give you more bang for your buck in that hamstring to bring it up to speed and get that strength going so you can get it better faster, okay? So just remember, don't straighten your leg when you come backwards and try and hook it. You go from here and you push back to there and then come up again. Once you can feel that, you can always put your hand there. When you get to there, you can really feel that hamstring insertion working super hard underneath the buttock. Okay, you can really feel that. Once you've got the hang of that, then you work on increasing the band tension of that to what you can tolerate. You know, some people be able to tolerate more than others depending on their strength and their rate of recovery. All right, so that's that one. Then your last one is using a different band. I like using this loop band. What you're gonna do is go back to your bench again and you're gonna do hip extension, right? But you're gonna try and do it with this band as a little load. 
some people won't need any load whatsoever. This would be hard enough as it is without any load. So I'm showing you with a light load what you can do. Again, same drill, put that around the back of the heel. What you can do with this one, this is pre-looped. We like pre-looping these ones. You put that into here so it is around and hooks onto your shoes. It's best done with shoes on, right? From there, what I want you to do, again, you're not doing a hamstring curl, all right? What I'm going to get you doing is a hip extension, all right, with a bit of load. Now, you can have your other leg off the side here, which will help you keep your back flat because this is one of those ones that you're going to feel like you're arching your back quite a lot. I want you to try and get your foot to about there, okay? So you're not doing 90 degree knee flexion because that will shorten the hamstring up too much, all right? We want to work on your weakest spot. So you're going to be weaker with a high hamstring tendinopathy. You're going to be weaker out here, okay? So that's where we want to start. And if you can see the, where the band is now, see it's in line with my shin, okay? It's not, it's there, it's not really in the right angle. So I'm in line with my shin like that. Then what I'm going to try and do is push my heel to the ceiling and do a hamstring lift, okay? Or a hip extension lift. So I'm trying to do that under load. So you're trying to get as much hip extension as you can. All right, it's a small movement, but you're going to really isolate that load there. And like I said, you won't need much load from the band because just raising your leg in that position is hard enough. Okay, so little holds like that, up high as you can go without trying to arch your back too much. Okay, that's why the bed support is quite good. Push it up. And you can see this is quite a big advancement of the hip extension of four point I was doing in the early phase video. This is way harder, okay? And it's just gonna really target at an open chain position. That last sort of 10, 20 degrees of movement, that strength that you need at the end of a push, the end of that run or whatever you're doing, like a sprint, to give you that sort of extra bit of strength in there, which helps target the whole thing. So, you can see I'm breathing hard already. That's my four, okay? There's lots of things you can do for hamstrings, but if you've got a high hamstring tendinopathy, you're past that early intervention stage, you've done all those boring exercises, this is the sort of a thing that you can move on to to try and increase your strengthening and get you closer to return to sport. Hope that helps. See you next time.